Hey traders, in this video, I'm going to be going over a trade example of how I scalp trade using a longer term time frame, most likely scenario, and then zooming in and using short term time frames to pinpoint that most likely longer term scenario. Before we get into it, I just want to make note, I did not start this trading style until year seven of trading. And that was after I significantly leveled up my capital in the cryptocurrency space and I was using larger position sizes. But the big benefit that I have from this style is number one, learning to scale in and scale out. And I used to try and nail tops and bottoms with one order before realizing that was very unlikely. And number two, how these different time frames interact with each other and relate to each other to help. Again, I'm using the one minute time frame to pinpoint a four hour candle. Let's look at it, how it played out. All right, so on the left here, we've got some charts that we're gonna look at. And on the right here is the text that I was doing the play-by-play -play yesterday morning. So the setup for the trade. Heading into the open, we have the high of the FOMC reaction. This is the four hour time frame on the NASDAQ futures chart. We have the low of the FOMC reaction and we were opening that morning. And as I doing my pre-market rundown of, of where am I looking, what's the setup I'm looking for, we were up right around here knowing that a four hour lower high is the most likely scenario, but also making note, okay, look at the bounce retracement size. The bounce retracement size is significant enough that when we do form a four hour lower high, we're then going to anticipate a four hour higher low is then the most likely scenario from there. Okay, so I zoom in on the hourly and I say on the hourly time frame, we're a bit extended. We're not overbought, but we had very little hourly consolidation on this move up. So again, are we likely to V-shape to a higher high or is the most likely scenario failing the FOMC high and forming an equilibrium? As we know, after significant volatility, we scout equilibriums. So I am very confident that I'm scouting a four hour lower high. I know I'm looking bearish and I wanna see the price get as extended to the upside as possible before the bell rings. And here heading into the open, we were trading up around here. Great, I'm looking bearish. I'm looking for a four hour lower high. Every single thing that I do from here on out, once the bell rings, is based on that premise. I am confident a four hour lower high is the most likely scenario. I'm going to use the shorter term time frames to help me pinpoint a position for that four hour lower high. So from there I zoom in and I'm on the one minute time frame just for the open when things are really volatile to see if I can get any little quick edge. And in this instance, it was a little double top. So here on the right, 9.34. So here's 930 at 934 at 932, 933. We double top at the high of the day. As soon as I see that, boom, I make my initial starting entry. And SQQQ was who I chose. So in SQQQ on the one minute double top at the high of the day. And then we drop down. And at that point, I start taking a little bit of profit. So out half at 935 or out 25%, out 25% more at 936 and a half. So very quickly, and I'm exiting on these candles down here. And what that does is puts me in complete control of the driver's seat. My stop goes over the high and I'm risk-free. At that point, we V-shape bounce and we do not change the one minute trend from the low of the day. I pull my stop. Now, isn't that dangerous? No, because I'm completely in control of this trade because I exited half of my position. So for me to have a day loser at this point, the price would have to shoot up, you know, 3% from the low of the day. So pulling my stop is essentially just preventing me from stopping out break even when we're extended on the one minute time frame. So back in half with no one minute trend change from the low of the day. So the one minute stair step pattern, higher low every single one minute candle. We have not changed the trend from the low of the day. And as soon as that one minute stair step pattern breaks, I re-enter the half that I sold in profit on that initial drop. And that was at 945. So right after. Out half of my re-entry, again, right away. That's a minute later. So I'm out half of my entry on this candle. And again, what that does is it means that my break even of that half re-entry is above where we just topped out. Out second half of my re-entry, 947. So down here, once the bounce started, I didn't nail the low there, it was into the bounce a little bit, exited the second half of that half. So now where do we stand? I'm back to half of my starting position and rather than my break even being something around right here, now because I just scalped a little, what did I say here? 
insignificant there, but knocked off 13 cents off of my average, which on SQQQ, 13 cents is a lot more meaningful than 13 cents on QQQ. And just to see where we stand in terms of what price SQQQ was at that point in time, we're looking at in the 40s. So 19 cents is something like 0.4%. So worthwhile, nothing notable, but worthwhile to pull that off. So at that point in time, I am in my half position because I've now exited the other half multiple times. I'm trying to find, where are we here? What day? There we go. That's not right. Oh, SQQQ, that's why I'm confused. Okay, back to QQQ. So at that point, I'm back to a half position and I just keep knocking down my average. And at this point, my average on SQQQ would be something like up here. And again, at no point, I, I was in red for a good part of this morning, red positions, but at no point, the maximum red that I saw was 40% of a day loser. So while I was red a good bit while I was positioning myself here, I was at no point out of control of the trade. Where would I put my stop levels? I don't place stop levels unless I'm in a full position. So I'm in a half position right now. If I add back the half, as soon as I do that, I then mentally say, okay, where's my stop gonna go? And at this point in time, it's all based on, I will risk a day loser because I'm not playing off of price levels here. Aside from these little scalps, you know, I'm trying to position for the four hour lower high and I don't have a clear stop level. There's no clear resistance that I'm playing off of. So if I hit a day loser level, I will exit, but I'm constantly maneuvering to ensure that I don't get to that day loser point. And I'm not in my full account here. This is just the maximum I'm willing to take for the trade. If I wanted to, I could have 10 times this position in SQQQ, but I would be way out of control at that point. And the last thing I wanna do is just keep scaling in. Next thing I know, I'm in four times the position size than I originally wanted. Nope, have to cap it. I will make this many shares will be my maximum position size I will take on this trade. And if I wanna keep maneuvering, I have to sell partial to get my ammo back to keep being able to maneuver. So at that point, insignificant, Little win there on that bull flag. SQQQ average 42.14 with half position ammo to keep maneuvering. So again, at that point in time, the one minute and on SQQQ there in that instance, it would be a one minute bear flag. So the one minute bear flag had played out. So I'm talking about right around here. And my average at that point is 42.14 and the low of the day is 42.20s. So again, I'm, I'm right here with my average, even though QQQ just hit a new high of the day, but still in control. So from there, what happens next? I don't know. Patient and comfy watching one minute EMA 12 support. So we're riding one minute EMA 12 support up and I'm letting the bulls do their thing a bit and hoping that we tire out knowing we have not changed the five minute trend from the low of the day. This is a V-shaped bounce. May add a two minute lower high. So I said that at 9.58. And at that point in time, we are right here. So we just dropped and lost one minute EMA 12. And I say, I might add a two minute lower high here for a bearish position to go back to a full position. And then I said, probably not. It was too quick for me. So probably not. With the five minutes still strong, if it were my first entry, I would, but because I'm in a half position already, I'm a little bit more cautious because again, as soon as I fire that second bullet, I'm out of ammo. So I'm preserving that bullet for when I really need it. So now I'm onto the five minute chart, okay? I've used up the one minute chart for the clarity and I'm onto the five minute chart at this point. And I'm scouting a five minute higher low, anything above the low of the day. If we go straight to high of the day from here on the one minute, I would look to add back the half. And that was at 10.04, back to the one minute. So at that point in time, 10.04, if we go straight to the high of the day, I will add it back. So here is the bounce starting. Here's our big green candle. And I say it right there. Okay, if we go back to the high of the day from here with no one minute consolidation, I'll add my half back. And at that point, I am recognizing that if we see a new high of the day and lack follow through, it's a rising wedge. And again, a rising wedge is just a pattern that shows us bare exhaustion. 
because the higher highs lacked follow through and it would be better on a different time frame, not the one minute here, but it's the higher highs that lack follow through. We had the high of the day at 350.68. We break it by less than 30 cents into a pullback. We break it by about 30 cents into a pullback. So from there, this is why. So I was watching this one minute channel and it wasn't much of a rising wedge there, but I was looking at some pre-market levels and we had this uptrending support. So this was the one minute that I was keeping an eye on. And I was saying, if we go straight back to the high of the day, I will enter bearish again because this uptrending resistance line is right there. Still sitting tight and patient because I'm already in half. That's at 10.11. So that we're up here right at the high of the day at that point. Got back in the half here and already out half of it. So that was at 10.16. So what did I recognize? Probably recognized a, a little one minute new high of the day. Consolidation, double top again. And then we start to pull back. So back in, all right. I'll fire my second bullet. I fire that second bullet. And as soon as I do, I very quickly sell half into this one minute pullback. Because now I'm in three quarters of a position, but I have a quarter maneuverability back. Then I out at exit the second half of that position at 1020. And that's as we are approaching this uptrending support line. So I'm now back to just my half. SQQQ average now is 4186. That was at 1021. So SQQQ. 1021 is down here and my average is 4186. So my average is down here and we're trading, I'm in the green. And my average is right near that low of the day. So then from there, scouting a two minute lower high to add back, looking for a head and shoulders. Because again, I'm in my half position. I would like a full size position for that four hour lower high what I'm doing all this maneuvering for. And it was right here where I was saying scouting a two minute lower high did not add there. It was too fast, this little quick lower high and dump and would need to be a five minute lower high if I were gonna add at this point. And we were testing that one minute support that we fell right through. I was red often, but max red was 40% of a day loser. And then we rolled over and now I can't lose. Now I know, okay, so that's exactly what I want to see. I did not have my large size position going aggressive, but I've got my half position certainly worthwhile. And then I recognized my ego is pumped and that's a red flag because at that point I was feeling flow state and feeling like, oh man, I am nailing this. I'm making all the right moves. And I recognized that I was feeling that way and that's a bit of a red flag for me. Expecting hourly higher lows on the futures chart initially. So at that point in time, futures chart on the morning from yesterday, I was looking right here. So I'm looking for an hourly higher low initially. We're back testing EMA 12. We've got tons of space for an hourly higher low. So now I'm out half of my core at 1040. So now I'm only down to a 25% position. So why was I exiting there at 1040? I don't know. So 1040, we were crushed. So five minute bear flag confirmed, little bear flag and a fresh low. Because I'm anticipating an hourly higher low and because short term RSI levels are now oversold, I'm out 25% half of my remaining core, so I'm down to a 25% position. Now, my average is 4161. That stop is below the low of the day. I cannot lose on the trade, but I am only in a small position size, only 25%. Back in half my core, that's when I was average. So I was back in half my core at 1046. So I exited half at 1040. I'm down to a quarter size position. Big bounce on the one minute, 1046 back in half of my core. So now I've got from the starter position, a half. From there, 
I wanted to exit it on the one minute higher low here, which we did form a one minute higher low, but I didn't want to be too zoomed in. So I don't want to be trading at this point knowing that, okay, the four hour lower high is looking likely now. And I don't want to be exiting my position too soon based on one minute time frames because I want to let that four hour play out. So I didn't, you know, I anticipated a one minute higher low is most likely here. And I had the trigger finger exit it again and I didn't. And then we changed the one minute trend and had a very significant bounce. And I said, yuck, back in another position for one minute consolidation. So yuck for the gains given back by not acting on the short term timeframes. So now I'm back to my full position at 11.01. So I had the half from the morning and now I'm back in another half full position. And I'm back in there because of the lack of one minute consolidation. We just made a very significant bull move of pretty much 1% with no one minute consolidation. And then 11.05. I exit half of what I just re-added. Very quick, probably very minimal profit there, if anything. And again, that's just giving my ammo back. Now I'm in a three quarter position. I want my ammo back. And stop is now break even, which is right around that high. And I recognize my flow state's gone. I'm over trading a little bit. And that red flag for my ego was an initial sign of that. So I'm setting my stop break even and leaving the computer. I had to go do something for a couple hours. All of this was knowing I'm going to be away from the computer for at least two hours in the middle of the day. And I want to have a position for that four hour consolidation because I'm going to be gone and I'm not going to be able to micromanage anymore. And then right before I left saying that, okay, I'm done for now. I, I went to the 15 minute time frame, and it then became very clear for me because as soon as that big V shape bounce takes place, I then say, okay, I wasn't expecting that size of a bounce. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. I pull up the 15 minute chart and say, oh, okay. This looks a lot more clear to me now. We're just looking for a 15 minute lower high. And maybe an equilibrium after that because of the size of the bounce was over 50% retracement, but I am just looking for a 15 minute lower high. So I lied. I did get that two minute top fish back to my full position. So I thought I was going to be done, but then I rolled into the 15 minute time frame. Can't suggest enough cycling through time frames because at that point in time when that big bounce took place and I'm giving back my profit I didn't know where the clarity was and I look at the hourly I look at the five minute I look at the 15 minute okay there it is 15 minute is clear so now I have confidence again anticipating a most likely scenario so here is that two minute lower high that I top fished again so I'm in a half position I see that resistance I see a big pullback I anticipate a lower high I re-enter my half position that was at 11.15, so right around here. And again, at that point, it just gives me a very clear low risk entry. So if I've got my half position with a stop under the low of the day on SQQQ, and I re-enter my second half position on this top fish, I can just stick my stop for the second half position right there. And all that would do is just increase. If I stopped out there, it would just increase my very comfortable half position break even, which is under the low of the day at that point. And that would probably just put it just above the low of the day. It would just, it would increase my cost basis a bit if I stop out there. And that's the beauty of adding two positions, averaging up essentially. And then when I add a position, I will have a different stop loss. I got my core stop loss and I got my aggressive position stop loss now. And they're, they're at different levels. Looking for clarity on the 15 minute, had to give it a chance. Also the support line back test. So that one minute uptrend that I had on the morning, it's not clear here, but we were back testing that uptrend line as resistance. So looking for a 15 minute lower high and a previous support line. So here it is. Here's our one minute support line I was watching. And then we back tested it and rejected for the 15 minute lower high. Not a clear rejection, but just a little bit of a visual guide. So out half of my ad at 11.18, that's down here. So that's the 15 minute lower high being set. I'm anticipating a 15 minute higher low because the bounce size on the 15 minute was over a 50% retracement. So I out half of the ad that I just made. So I'm down to three quarters again. 
stop break even on the entire position, and now I'm gone. And here were some of my orders for that. And that was it. Oh, no, I did one more. 11.27. So down here. So all out, half of the ad. So I did leave the computer with only a half position, and I just had... I just made some gains on this 15 minute lower high. We then did 15 minute equilibrium and I was gone from the computer at that point in time. So pretty much stop is set. My stop is if QQQ breaks a new high of the day, I will stop out break even. I've got uh, half a position and we ended up 15 minute equilibrium. This is on the five minute time frame, but it was a 15 minute equilibrium that rolled over. So I was actually getting a massage at this point in time. So I was semi-conscious and in a very good place while we rolled over into weakness. At that point in time, I came back at the end of the day. This bounce had already taken place. I sit back down at the computer right here. And I say, okay, well, that's a big enough bounce that I'm going to anticipate a five-minute higher low compared to the low of the day is the most likely scenario. I don't want to swing this position. So I'm out. And it was a big win. And it would have been bigger if I was in a full position, but certainly worthwhile. It was probably a day and a half to a two-day maker on the half position that I have. So I locked that in and then I recognized a five minute falling wedge. Now again, I'm anticipating a four hour higher low is the most likely result of this four hour consolidation that I ended up getting the right position on. And so I'm scouting this 50, this five minute falling wedge at the end of the day and I make a bullish entry based off of it. And we didn't get a ton of bounce follow through, but this bounce right here is a 1% bounce and playing the three times leverage ETFs, it's very easy to get you know, that's a 3% bounce on the leverage ETF. So easy to get one to 2% of that move and just had a little bull win at the end of the day. But again, the only reason I'm looking to play bull there is recognizing a falling wedge as bear breaks lack follow through and knowing that the four hour higher low is the most likely scenario. So at this point, some questions would be, that's a lot of trading. Isn't that a waste of time? No, I enjoy this. I had fun the entire time that I was doing that. And I'm a better trader today than I was yesterday because of this experience. I'm not playing this game to make money. It's a very nice bonus. But if you are in this game to make money or you're not in this game because you enjoy it, you're probably not going to make money, at least not consistency lo consistently long term. So I'm playing a video game and I enjoy it. I have a lot of fun. It activates my brain. It keeps me sharp mentally. And the rewards are nice. Uh, other question would be, what about stop losses? Again, at no point did I even have to think about putting a stop loss in because my biggest red was a 40% day loser, which means nothing. You know, I can make that back when you, the biggest difference that I see with experienced traders and inexperienced traders is confidence, obviously. And when, when you have the history and the confidence of consistency, a day loser, I can, I can make back a day loser with my eyes closed tomorrow. That's the confidence that I have. So I don't fear at any point, you know, losing a day loser is no biggie. I'll risk that easy peasy because of how easy peasy it is to make it the next trade that I take. And I have that confidence. If you're a newer trader and you're risking a day loser, well, I don't want to get a day loser. And the next thing I know, I'm in another red position and now I've got a losing streak going. It's very different psychologically in terms of just being ready and willing to willy nilly risk a day loser. And obviously you want good setups. You're not just throwing your money at anything that, that presents itself. But if you get those good setups, then no problem risking that amount. So didn't even think about putting a, a clear hard stop level aside from, okay, trade's going in my favor. I've got a lot of space to work with now. Now I'll place my stop level because I'm going to be away from the screen. All right, feel free to ask any questions. And I will answer all of those questions in the comments here. And hopefully you learn something.